Hey guys, today I'm going to talk to you about how to set the fire in the wood burning stove and keep it going for a very long time. So I've been living on a narrow boat for a year and a half now and this is my second winter on board. I live in a boat full time and I continuously cruise so change location every week or two. Last winter I have gone through all of the challenges of learning how the wood burning stove works how to start a fire, how to keep it going for a long time. And I was looking for a video like this to help me understand how this works because it's a bit of an art. But now I've got some experience and I would like to share with you guys what I've learned, what works best for me and for my stove. Um, and also at the very end of the video, I'll tell you about the mistakes I've made. So hopefully you can avoid them. So in this video, I will be covering how to start the fire, how to keep it going overnight, stove accessories, most economical way of keeping the fire going for a long time and the mistakes I've made. Let me introduce our stove first. Probably you're going to have a different stove, but the main principles will apply. Our stove here is Arrow 5 kilowatts multi-fuel burner so we can burn coal and wood in it. So the stove has two vents, the top and the bottom. The top vent regulates airflow um, for wood fires and the bottom one regulates airflow for coal fires, but I'll touch on to that in a minute. Let's talk about types of fuel. We use wood, coal, we also use kindling to start the fire um, and sometimes we use fire lighters. Um, we use natural wood shaving fire lighters that are covered in wax so they're good for the environment. These are the main sources of fuel. There is an alternative source that sometimes we can get. It is coffee logs. It is a waste product so no trees were chopped. They keep going overnight really well so we use that for fuel as well. Most of the time we get all our supplies from fuel boats that come around every couple of weeks. But for coffee logs we've got to find them somewhere like being q or where some of the waitros do them. How to start the fire. The best way I found setting the fire is called top down method. So you begin by putting a log first and then kindling and paper or wood shavings on the top so once the kindling sets on fire it slowly helps to set a log on fire when starting the fire keep both of the vents top and bottom one open for the airflow and often i also leave the door slightly open so it's not really open but the uh, handle is unlocked so there is a bit of a gap there helps to start the fire really strong once there's lots of flames and the log is properly on fire, I start laying coal all around that log, adding a few at a time, letting it all kind of heat up together. And once the coal is red, I start regulating the vents for the coal fire. The top vent is almost close, not to the fullest because the airflow helps to clean the glass. Um, and then you can regulate the bottom one depending on how strong you want the fire. When we just moved on to the boat and we spoke with a few boaters, um, loads of people said that the idea is to start the fire sometime in September, October and keep it going all the way till April or May. That was a very strange idea to me because I couldn't keep the fire going for for even 12 hours at that point and I thought that must be some kind of magic. There are a few reasons why you want to do that and not only for um, the warmth reasons. Um, first of all, condensation. Condensation is a challenge on boats and by having um, wood burning stuff going for long, long periods of time, it really helps to keep the place dry and all your furniture dry, stuff like that. Another reason is by having fire going continuously, you will actually save some money because um, starting it every time and adding a log every time, um, it doesn't seem like the most economical way of doing it. And another reason why you want the fire going continuously is once it goes out and the temperature drops, um, everything on the boat starts to cool as well. So going back and starting the fire again a few hours later, for example, you will 
waste quite a few hours starting it it will take time to warm up the boat so it takes a lot longer to start the fire from when the boat is cold and the stove is cold as well so what are the things that you need to do to keep the fire going overnight or even 24 hours a day a week after week first of all make sure that you have enough coal in the stove so once the fire is lit keep adding coal for our stove we load about a third to a quarter of coal every time and this way it keeps it going for hours make sure that your coal is high quality so many boaters will swear by different brands of coal and obviously decide try different brands because some might work better in your stove and on your boat than others we tested a few and found what works best for us as well but I have heard that buying coal from petrol stations even though it says smokeless coal on it is not a good idea for these type of stoves because they do burn hotter I think they're soaked in, in petrol or something like that so they do burn hotter and over time they can damage these stoves so do stick to the special coal made for these stoves once you've got enough coal in the stove and it's all hot and burning another thing that you need to make sure is to regulate the vents correctly so for a coal fire you want to keep this one open or maybe to a midway and the top one should be pretty much closed a tiny bit open if you're making fire from wood it's the other way around some evenings I forgot to close the vents and all of them were left open and that's when you wake up in the morning in a freezing boat and the fire has gone out a trick that we found last winter and we use this use it this winter is on really cold nights when we've got the coal fire already going before going to bed we add a coffee log on top of the fire and it really helps with warmth and with the fire going for longer periods of time and the last thing that I found useful in keeping the fire going is just before going to bed I clear the ash from the coal this way it helps it breathe and it doesn't suffocate the coals overnight sometimes you wake up in the morning and there are a few coals that red umbers in the stove loads of ash by the time you clear all the ash the coals look small they're not red anymore and the fire needs reviving so what do you do yes you can start the fire from scratch but there are other ways uh, depending on how much coal left if you've got enough this might work first clear the ash second pile in the remaining coal in one kind of big pile or small pile then I will use bellows here it is um, it really helps to direct airflow onto a specific area so I just use that on the coals helps them to go red again and I will open all of the vents and might even open the door slightly for maybe no longer than five minutes just to get the flames going and once you've got the flames going you can add more coal you can add a log if you want to and the fire is back on do remember to close the door though because if you have coal fire opening the door will decrease the temperature so it's quite a short-term trick now started talking about stove accessories um, let me show you a few other things that we have we've got this shovel that helps to um, put some coals on although I don't use it very often but I use it for um, clearing out the ash we've got these scissor like things that are great for putting coals on the fire we've got the coal bucket that lasts us for about two days on average this kind of thing is really useful for poking the fire moving things around and another great accessory that we have is a stove fan this is it this is an eco fan we bought this ecofan in the autumn and we were really really happy when guys from ecofan reached out to us and they wanted to sponsor our video i'll tell you a little bit more about this fan so it's made in canada it's a really sturdy fan it does not require any electricity to work 
as soon as this stove gets hot, the fan automatically starts spinning. And what it does is it's pushing the warm air into the room rather than letting it all rise up. But also it circulates so much air, it helps us to keep the whole boat warm. Our stove is in the middle of the boat and we've got a walkthrough bathroom and bedroom that way, which is another half of the boat. And this fan, when directed that way, which is mostly where, where it is, um, really, really helps to get all that warm air all the way into the bedroom. So last year, when we bought this boat and we didn't really know much about all of this stuff, we did have a fan, but we, we inherited it with the boat. And that fan wasn't um, original eco fan. We had so many problems with it. It was noisy, um, it was a bit flimsy, so it fell off a few times. Loads of boaters kept telling us, oh, these eco fans are great, they make such a difference. But we, if somebody would ask us, do, do they make a difference? We were like, mm, I don't know exactly, does it make a difference? But as soon as we got this guy, straight away I could definitely tell the difference and our bedroom is a lot warmer quite a few degrees warmer than it was last winter another thing is great about this fan is that once you start the fire because of this air circulation it gets warmer a lot quicker on the boat so you sometimes you might if without the fan you might need to wait half an hour for the whole boat to warm up then you don't need to do it with this one and equally you will be using a little bit less fuel because the whole place is warmer just naturally so now I'm going to tell you guys about all of the mistakes I made last winter learning to start the fire and keep it going. So hopefully it will prevent you from making the same mistakes. First mistake I made at the very beginning is I used wrong kindling. As I mentioned we get our fuel from the fuel boats on the cut and the first kindling that we bought wasn't actually the same kindling I ever I always get. It wasn't anything like this. It looked like chopped bricks. It, it was very solid. It was three or four times thicker than this. But because I didn't know, I tried lighting the fire with this with it and it just never stuck. It just never went. And I felt so embarrassed I couldn't even start the fire. I couldn't even light it. That was my first problem. So luckily after a few weeks we got another supplier, got a different type of kindling, and I realized that it wasn't actually me. The same applies to uh, wood, certain logs that you get might, be, might have high humidity. You can use certain types, certain devices to check before buying. Some wicks is better and some wicks is worse, but um, we kind of fine with that. Second mistake I made was I used to start the fire first with kindling and then adding a log on top and it really rarely works. Now I do the opposite, I'll do log and then kindling on top. But also what I used to do, I used to start with coal and then kindling, but often we uh, keep our coal on the roof and it's not always the most waterproof place. Um, so I used to try starting fire with potentially wet coal, um, so also that didn't help. So now I make sure the fire is on and then slowly lay the coal around the log. And that works best. Another mistake I've made multiple times is not opening this door when I start the fire. So obviously I don't open it, but just just keeping handle unlocked. Um, I used to be afraid of smoke coming in. It doesn't really work like that because the airflow goes inside, so it's not a big deal, but it really, really helps to start the fire. Or sometimes if the fire gone out, just opening that a little bit really helps to bring it back to life. Another mistake I've made was not using enough coal. So when we moved on board and started making fires, we didn't know what's, um, how much coal to use. So we would use like three pieces, six pieces, eight pieces. We didn't really know how much you're supposed to use. Um, but now we use a lot, a lot more than ever. So if you want the fire going for a long period of time, you need to use quite a lot of coal. It's, it's gonna last you for a whole day as well. It's not just gonna all burn out together. So don't worry about that, just use enough. As I mentioned, a quarter to a third um, of coal in our stove is a good amount. In fact, I should top it up now. 
I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, please give this video a like and check out our vlogs. We post a fresh one every week. Thanks again to EcoFan for reaching out and sponsoring this episode. You're not only keeping our boat warm, you're also keeping our channel going. So thank you for that.